that are here this evening. Um, they're a mother and daughter. Mother's name is Hisa, the daughter's name is Hikaru Uzawa. That's their last name, the stage name that they use. And uh, they have both trained in uh, the Tesenkai School of Nome. It's one of the preeminent schools of Nome in Tokyo, and it's a sub-branch of the uh, larger school called the Kanzei School, which is named after the two founders of uh, what we know as Nome today, Kanami and Zeami, who flourished in the late 14th and early 15th century. So what we have here is a performance tradition that stretches back now to about 700 years, uh, an uncontinuous tradition uh, taught orally from master to disciple for uh, many dozens of generations now. Um, what's remarkable about uh, the Uzawas are these are two women practicing in a performance art that has certainly uh, in the last uh, few centuries become dominated uh, by male practitioners. Um, no actor Hisa Uzawa was born into a No family in 1949. Her father was a lead actor. Um, called Shtekata. Um, Shte means the doer or the protagonist, and people actually devote their lives to playing lead roles. They don't play bit parts. If you, you start out as a lead role and you end as a lead role, that's your job, that's your fate uh, in uh, this uh, tradition bound performance art. And uh, she also studied under Masashi. Uzawa and the great uh, actor, uh, no actor of the 20th century, Hisao Kanze, um, was one of her teachers. Also under Tetsuno Jo Kanze, the eighth. She debuted at the age of three in the play The Drunken Sprite, Shoujo. And at the age of 13, she performed as the lead actor in the play The Deity of Yoshino, Yoshino Tenmi. She has performed lead roles in a wealth of plays and is regularly featured in plays within the Kansei Tessenkai school. Hisa has been recognized as a preserver of important intangible cultural property. That's a pretty highfalutin title. It's a designation by the Japanese government and is better known as living national treasure. Um, she's a recipient of the Kawasaki City Cultural Prize and recently the Kansei Hisao Hosei University No Theater Prize, which is the highest accolade that the No World gives to a No actor. She's been recognized for her achievements in No Theater, insightful interpretations of the art, and exceptional levels of artistic excellence. Her daughter, Hikaru, was born into a No family in 1979 and she followed in the footsteps of her grandfather and her mother as a lead actor in the Kanzei Tessenkai. Um, she studied under Masashi Uzawa, under her mother Hisa, and Tetsuno Jo Kanzei the Ninth. She made her debut at the age of three on stage in the play Oimatsu, The Age of Pine. And at age 13, she performed her first lead role in the play, The Drunken Sprite. <laughs> it's what young folk do. And she's shown remarkable artistic versatility through a wide range of plays, including Dojoji, considered one of the most difficult plays in the No repertoire to perform. Hisa and Hikaru Uzawa have both collaborated in modern theater collaborations and held workshops and productions abroad. Their last visit to Canada was in 2007 for a sold out performance of Lady Aoi at uh, UBC. So that's uh, our performers tonight. And I mentioned the sort of great venerability of the Nome Theatre. We have to go back to the Japan's Middle Ages and a variety of different kind of popular and quasi-religious entertainments that came together under the ages of Kanami and his son Zayami, who
who were then recognized by the shogun at the time, Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, and given official patronage. And since the Middle Ages, uh, down to uh, the end of the Edo period, uh, the No Theater was uh, basically under the sponsorship and protection of uh, the samurai class. Samurai themselves would be amateur practitioners of it, and uh, the daimyo, the various shoguns and, 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 uh, and barons would have no troops uh, that they would uh, sponsor. The uh, style of theater uh, combines song, dance, and dramatic elements, stage characters, uh, who range from poor people and mad people to ghosts and demons. The language of no is elegant and poetic. It's in a classical idiom. It is a masked theater, and in the latter half we will see um, uh, Kanze Hisa uh, perform in the mask. Uh, there are about 240 works in the current repertoire of the no theater. And um, five schools of no, and most prominent is the Kanze school. A little bit about the play that we'll be seeing and discussing today. It's called Atsumori, and it's based on an episode from the great military chronicle, The Tales of the Heike. Um, this is a fictionalized account of a historical event, the civil wars that occurred in the 1180s in Japan between two great clans, the Taira and the Minamoto, otherwise known as the Heike and the Genji. And what the this chronicle does, and I consider it one of the world classics up there with the Iliad in terms of its importance to our world heritage. Um, what this epic does, it tells of the fall of the house of Heike. And in this particular point in the story, the Genji or the Minamoto have rushed in from the east, wild, kind of rough, uncouth samurai, and driven out the rather effete and comfortable clan of samurai in the Kyoto area, in the capital, and driven them out of the capital, and they've moved for a while to what is present-day uh, Kobe, on, the, on the, uh, the, the banks of the inland sea. And this story tells us about one character, a fallen warrior from the, um, from the Heike clan, called Atsumori. Uh, he falls in a duel at a battle called Ichinotani. And um, he is escaping with his compatriots uh, to the ships that are going to take them out into the sea and, and away from the marauding uh, Genji warriors. And, uh, Atsumori is just a 16-year-old boy. He happens to be the grandson of the regent, a very powerful uh, person in his own right, uh, but still a young man. And a Genji warrior, a guy by the name of Kumagai Naozane, calls to him as he sees uh, Atsumori ride in his horse out into the water to try to um, board one of the ships. And he says, you know, you're a warrior, you don't show your back to your enemy. And so Atsumori wheels around and comes back, and they do battle. And they fight first on horseback, and then they grapple with each other, and they fall off the horseback onto the beach. And Naozane is the bigger and the older and the more experienced warrior. He tears off the helmet of the young man to take his head, because this is what they did in those days. They took the heads as trophies so that they could show their superiors uh, who they had taken. And what he sees is this young boy. He's only 16 years of age. He's got his face made up with powder, and he's blackened his teeth like, like, like uh, the, the courtiers, both the men and the women, did at that time. And what's more, he sees his own son, because his own son is the same age and he can't bring himself to, to, to behead this boy. And he bewails the fate of being a warrior, that, he, that his business is the taking of life. 
And what is he to do? He says, you know, I would release you, but behind are some of his compatriots coming, uh, galloping closer, and he says, I can't, I can't leave you here. The boy says, take my head, you know, be quick with it, and, uh, and show it uh, to your masters, and they'll tell you who I am. And so he does. He takes the, the head, and he wraps it in uh, the uh, robe of the young man, and finds in that robe a flute, and recalls hearing a flute the night before the battle, and thinking what elegant people these Heike were, that they could play music. And so what does, what does Kumagai do? He says, I can do nothing. I have to leave this, 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 this world of, of killing and become a priest. And so he takes priestly vows. Our play begins 10 years later where he's changed his name to Bensho or Bensei, in this version Bensei. And he comes back to the site of the battle to do a memorial service for the spirit of Atsumori. And I think maybe at this point, I will call on Hikaru, if she's available, uh, to come in. And we will go through um, a kind of an explanation of the, the, the beginnings of the play. And in the second half, we'll take the slideshow away, and we will give you a somewhat stripped down performance of the climax of Atsumori with Hisa performing as the 16-year-old boy. Uh, incidentally, this is the first time, uh, this tour is the first time that Hisa has ever performed this role. She's 70 years old now, and she's performing as a 16-year-old boy. Role uh, in Hagoromo, a fisherman, 
and the robe of the angel. And here you see the musicians in chorus, and the yeah, chorus of Zebukai over at the right there, and the musicians. And we have uh, different kinds of instruments. There's a stick drum here, um, which will not be used, not Simone, it's not used in every play. It's only used for certain plays. And then two head drums. There's a hip drum and a shoulder drum. The otsusumi and the otsusumi. The otsusumi has a sharp crack sound to it. And the shoulder drum has a kind of a hollow like that. And then uh, the flute. Uh, we also have stage attendants. You see one of them uh, up, uh, seated at the back there who help uh, with uh, adjusting the costuming, picking out props that are no longer used. And we can begin with the description of Atsumori. It's a warrior play. え、ここからスライドを使いながら見ていきたいと思います。え、ここからは舞台が始まったような気持ちでご覧ください。So she's going to begin with kind of a uh, summary of the first half of Atsumori and imagine that uh, the play is going to unfold for you uh, right here now. She'll be showing us a number of stills from uh, a performance. まず一番初めお客様が舞台に入ってきたあの脳を見に来た時まず舞台上には何もありませんし誰もおりませんそして一番初め幕の中から林のお調べという中人のような音が聞こえてきますその音が海縁ベルと同じ意味ですそしてそ
座に着きました、えー、彼らは能の演技に立ち上がってセリフを言ったりということはいたしません、えー、ずっとこの形でまるで、えー、背景のように、えー、演奏あるいは聖書を続けます so, ここに、えー、とこの上座という場所に立って今これは自分は連星である、えー、そのように自分の名を名乗っているシーンです。So, するとですね、えー、若い、えー、草刈り男たちが、えー、その一の谷の連世に乗るといるところに現れます。
、まあ、今先生もおっしゃいましたけどあのいろいろ笛というものにあのすごく、えー、と草刈りというのが笛を吹くもので、えー、その笛というものは、えー、いろんな笛の種類が世の中にはあるけれどもその中でも我々草刈りが吹くのは青葉の笛というのがぴったりだというようなことを言ったりとかしています、えー、これは熱森が笛の名手だったということが今ここで伏線として実はちょっとここで、えー、ちゃんと伏線となっております So, having mentioned that there are all these famous flutes in literature and legend,、uh, they say of all of the flutes, this one flute called Aoba was considered to have one of the sweetest of, of, of sounds. And、uh, this is a kind of、um, an indirect hint、uh, relating to the fact that Atsumori himself was a famous flautist. And、uh, so、uh, it gives a kind of an intimation to the audience that, that, that、uh, these humble grass cutters, particularly this guy, is no ordinary person. So, 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 Ensues between the Waki and the Shte, between Rensei the priest and this humble、uh, grass cutter、uh, who is really Atsumori, but we don't quite yet know that. そして、えー、草刈りの仲間たちはここで幕の中に消えてしまいます、えー、主役の一人だけがここで残ることになります So all the grass cutters、uh, make their exit except for the last one in the light green costume here. And he comes back. So, why did he leave one of them? He said, the young man who is going to be a young man, he said, 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 その折に自分は熱森のゆかりの者関係者であるということをほのめかしますその熱森という言葉を聞いた途端連生の中に一気にやはり思いが膨れ上がってそしてこのシーンは2人で念仏を唱えているシーンです。So this young man comes back and then say ask him why did you remain?、Uh, why didn't you go back with the other guys? And he says, um, uh, I have a favor, I, 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 I need you to pray for me.、Uh, I, have, I have a connection、uh, to a person called Atsumori. And as soon as Densei hears the name of Atsumori, he of course thinks of the, of the boy that he had killed. And then、uh, the young man asks him if he would、uh, please do a kind of a solemn liturgy to pray、uh, for his soul. And so at this moment we see them、uh, doing the Nembutsu, the Namu Amida Butsu,、uh, calling on the, on, on the holy name of the Buddha、uh, together. そして最終的には彼はあの「私の名前は名乗らなくても分かるでしょう」と言って、まあ、ほとんど自分が実はその熱森の幽霊であるということを完全にちょっと明かして。えー、最終的に消えていきます。So as he makes his exit, he intimates to Densei, I'm sure you know who I really am.、Uh, and at this point, we all sort of get the sense, oh, this must be the spirit of Atsumori himself, although he doesn't come out and actually say it, but we all get the picture. えー、そしてその連星が、えー、不思議なことが起きたなと思っていると地元の民これは狂言が担当する能の中で一役担当する愛狂言という役です、えー、地元の人という役なんですけどもその人が現れて、えー、熱森の,との一の谷の合戦のことであったり熱森の死に至るまでの話だったりを連星とに語ります。Here we move into an interlude, and、uh, the purpose of the interlude is twofold. First of all, it gives time for the actor to go back and do a costume change, put on a mask, and, 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 and transform、uh, him or herself.、Uh, 
uh, into the character of the second act of the play. Uh, but it also gives an opportunity for the audience to hear in plain language what this story is about. And the, uh, this, this guy here that you see in the Czech kimono is a Kyogen actor. He comes from the Kyogen uh, school, the, the, the farces, the more comic uh, performance art of the, of, of, of the same uh, age as the gnome. And these actors also serve uh, to do this kind of Kyogen interlude where they uh, relate the story in uh, prosaic and more easily understandable terms. And this guy here, well then, he says he's a bit villager, and he tells the story, the tale of the Heike and the fall of Atsumori uh, by, um, by the hands of, of, uh, of Kumagai Majiro Naozane, uh, the story that, that we've already uh, laid out to you. <coughs> そして、えー、連世が一人、えー、厚森の菩提を弔って、えー、ここからは連世の夢なのか誠なのかわかりませんけれども、えー、厚森も幽霊に対して一生懸命祈ります今日はこのシーンから後半部分すべてを皆様にご覧いただくこととなります。So at this point,、uh, the Kyogen actor has also、uh, retired. And we have the Machi Utai, the priest, Nensei,、uh, sits down and he says that I will pray uh, for the, uh, the salvation of、uh, the spirit of Atsumori.、Uh, the music will、uh, presently begin as、uh, we wait for the entrance of、uh, the Shite in his transformed state as the ghost. Of Atsumori. So at this point, our slide presentation will end and we will move into the second half of the play, which we will perform、uh, for you. So,